Good evening, everybody. Welcome to church. We're going to have church tonight or try to have church. Um, if you'd like to stand and sing a song with us, Jackie's going to give us the page number. Page six. Page six. And Bill's going to try to play the guitar for us. And we're going to need some help, won't we, Everybody Jackie? Everybody sing in C. <laughs> Jackie says we're singing in C. Tom? Ready? Here we go. While traveling through this, this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I'm not turned back for some tomorrow. My trials here I'll understand. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I need to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I need to know more than I know now. I'm glad I know the blessed Savior. For through his blood he set me free. Through the road I shall not waver. For some glad day his face I'll see. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. No more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I need to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I need to know more than I know now. Promise when his soul ascended, I'm coming back. The Lord did say, If all must promise you depended on wings of love, you'll soar away. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I need to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I need to know more than I know now. Um, if heaven is so great, why would we need a mansion? Why are we going to be indoors? Right, Tom? We ain't going to be hanging out inside. We're going to be out playing in the yard. Uncle Jimmy, will you open us up in prayer, please? You can stand or sit, whatever you want to do. And Jackie will give us some paper. Okay, paper. so now we're going to show him what we're going to do in heaven. We're going to go to 393. Uh-oh. <laughs> 393. And <laughs> we all get to heaven. <laughs> sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his in the mansions bright and blessed 
He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will over. Spread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the choice of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all sing and shout the victory. Onward to the path before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Hey. Jackie. Want another one? Yeah. Okay. Um, power in the blood. All right. 390. 390. It's a couple pages over. What did I say? Left hand by a couple pages? Left hand turn or something? <laughs> one page. <laughs> one page? Power in the blood. Would you? What's your blood type? Is anybody, Bev, you know your blood type? Joe, A. A, thank you. A positive or negative? Positive. All right. The crowd doesn't like this. We've got to move on. <laughs> Ready? 399. Would you be free from the burden of sin? 390. 390. Okay. All right. Has everybody got it? I got it. Here we go. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you for evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come to a cleansing to Calvary side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin saints are lost in his life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. 
wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Good. Thank you, Jackie. You're very welcome. All right. Pastor Joe, obviously, and Marcy, they're obviously not here today, so they're on vacation. We can pray for them. Um, let's pray for Henry. Let's pray for Jacob. I don't want to list them all. If you guys have a prayer request, please let us know. Go ahead, Tina. Let's remember Jenny. She fell one day. Okay. Jenny Brown. She's back home, though. She fell and hit her head. So she was spent from 2 a.m. in the morning until that evening. Okay. Uh, Amen. And, and Jessica Lawson. Mm -hmm. I believe she's having some tests today. So let's remember her. And Todd, her dad, uh, their whole family, I suppose. Anyone else? Dave and Dorothy down vacation. Oh, where'd they go? Um. Okay. <laughs> Camping or Tennessee, one or two, huh? Vicky? Our brother-in-law is having hip surgery tomorrow, and that's where they go most well. All right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Know if he has brain damage or, or can see or whatever. He does recognize people though. He is awake now. So, uh, you know, it's just a long road ahead because he's been in a coma for so long. And then pray for Rich that he gets good news on his tests. Okay, all right. I remember my uncle Jack got to Colorado. And, uh, a year or so ago, he lost his son. And uh, his other son is his only. So for whatever reason, mm -hmm. that's a good man. So he's, for his daughter, is taken care of. Him. So his wife is in, uh, my aunt is in uh, convalescent home. She needs 24 out here. Uh -huh. So they're having a welcome. All right. Mm -hmm. Jackie? Um, Hubert Stubbs called me today, and he wanted me to tell everybody hi. Mm -hmm. He's doing really good, so we can pray for him to keep doing well. Okay. He's in Louisiana, right? He's in, he's in uh, assisted living. Oh. Anyone else? Cho Cho. And that prayer for the Ty Smith family, his funeral was today, 34 year old. Okay. And uh, they're struggling. It's hard to just keep the family prayer. Yeah, I understand. I struggle sometimes too, and I'm. shouldn't, I don't know. Anyone else? Silas. Yeah, so I got a lady that I'm old for, she's kind of a good friend too, so uh, she's in a coma, so mm -hmm. don't look good for her, this guy's in the bed, so it's great for her. She's okay. got cancer. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, things are possible. Anyone else? No other person? I'm going to for the families that were injured in the shooting on Saturday, as oh. well as the family of the young men in the past. Oh, yeah. Our country. <coughs> for sure. Go ahead, Jackie. Yeah. Um, right for me, I had a biopsy Monday and I haven't heard anything back yet. We'll see. All right. Are you nervous? No. Good. They always need biopsies. <laughs> oh, okay. I pray about it all the time, too, so. All right. <coughs> Anybody else? Mr. Dave Horton, do you want to pray for us? If you don't mind. Amen. Beth, you and Vicky back. <laughs> Something down here. Can I can help her. We know the routine, don't we? Yes. All right. 
It's up to you guys. You don't want to? No? Huh? I already got enough going here. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not the right spirit, is it? No, it's not. That's, that's bad. That's bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Brother Bill. Save me, pray. 
Too long ago, I gave a talk about faith and different aspects of it, and that just because you use it to get saved, you know, and put your belief in God and Jesus and what He done, you still have to continue to use it, and you still have to continue to exercise it. And um, I mean, I feel that way more than ever. It seems like tonight, um, Pastor Joe, you know, he's gone, and Dave is gone, which is in the booth. So they asked me, would I give a lesson? And I sat down and, you know, I've been thinking, you know, the first thing I do is just try to meditate and ask God, pray, say, what is it, you know, bring something to my mind and kind of just start to run with it. And that's what I did. That's what I did this time. And, you know, there's been a portion of scripture that I've really been focusing on lately. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. That has to be it because, I mean, that's maybe that's why I've been focusing on it so much. And so I sit down and I'm trying to put my points together and make everything come out all nice and neat and it seemed as that while i was doing that it all just got transformed into something else <laughs> you know and i mean say whatever you want about that you know say i don't know the spirit of god or what i mean you know that's just what happened so you sometimes when i get up here i feel already somewhat inadequate you know thinking of who i am and everything i've done in my life and why would God want to use me? Or, And then you get to a point where you throw a message together and you're just wondering, like, how is this supposed to come out? You know, how's it going to work on short notice? You know, but got to use faith, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do here tonight. Um, it seems that um, Janet got the memo, though, um, because the, the message that somehow I got and put together is about love. And she wore her love T-shirt today. So thank, thank you, Janet. I apologize to you for calling you trouble before, because <laughs> now you're, you're on my. Feels like I got somebody on my side today. You know, you're not trouble. So we'll be trouble together, maybe. How's that? Um, and you know the, it's it's weird as a. Sometimes as I don't know if it's just a guy thing also, but you feel like love is like. That's, that's, that's soft stuff. That's girl stuff. That's something we don't talk about much, you know? And you know sometimes when you want to tell... Like, f for, for me to tell my mom that I love her, mm -hmm. it's, not that, it's not that hard. For me to tell my brother that I love him, that's a little different. You know, that's a little different thing, you know? And it's like, I feel this apprehension. Like, I don't want to tell him that all the time. I just, I try to shy away from that. So it's like... I don't, I don't know why, you know, I don't know why that is. Um, well, you can show it. I mean, I try to show it to him. I don't, sometimes, I feel awkward, like when I go try to hug him, you know, but I want to hug him and just let him know that I love him, but I don't, it's hard to say it and it's hard to show it. I don't know, I don't know why that is when you really think about, you know, when I put this little lesson together, it's like, I don't know, the, the, what love can do is it can cause... You know, it can change the world. It can cause God himself to come out of heaven, to come down here for us, you know, and that's, that's powerful. You know, and I don't even know if I understand how powerful love is and, and what it can do. And I try to say that I'm going to love everybody, you know, and, and do right to everybody, which I don't, but, I, for the, you know, I try day to day to to love everybody or I try to let that govern my life and say, 
you know, how would I want to be treated here, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. And, but I don't necessarily, I don't always understand how love works or what it can do, but I don't know. It feels like it's the most powerful thing that there is, that God has made, you know, that God has instilled in us. And Some people have trouble saying those words. Mm -hmm. I've said people to brothers and sisters, I love you, and they'll mm -hmm. say, bless you, mm -hmm. because they just can't utter those words. Yeah. But God said, That's love true. one another. So it's not wrong to yeah. speak those words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, I don't know why there's apprehension sometimes, you know. Maybe, I don't, I don't know why. I know I feel it, you know, but I don't know. There's different kinds of love. Mm -hmm. And there, there, there are definitely different types of, and kinds of love. I'm not going to try to break down all the different types or anything like that tonight. Just, I just thought about love, you know. And then one of the first verses that, no, well, it wasn't the, one of the first verses that came to mind this time, but it's like on my wallpaper on my computer screen, and it's in 1 John chapter 4. Verse 18, you can turn there if you want. There's going to be a, a few different spots in the Bible that we're going to go to tonight, but I can wait for you. We can go together on this journey, you know. Um, obviously, because it's called First John, this is supposedly written by John, the disciple, who followed Jesus. And, he, and, and the reason they believe that, one reason they believe that is because he uses a lot of language that Jesus used. Um, you know, in particular, he calls out a bunch of people little children. You know, there's the people, he wrote the letter and said, dear little children or little children. And he says a lot of things as other writers do. They say a lot of things that echo what Jesus said. Huh. And um, in, in the first point I have is the power of love. How, what, what's the power of love? What can it do? And, and I need to grab a hold of this all the time. And that's why it's a screensaver on my computer or my um, wallpaper on my computer screen, on my monitor, 1 John 4, verse 18 says, there is no fear in love. And I need this verse because I fear a lot of things. I fear loneliness. I fear separation. I fear no one caring about me. I fear losing my job. I fear, you know... Sounding silly when I get up here. I have a lot of fears, and I'm not going to lie. And is a fear a sin? Sure. Is anxiety a sin? Sure. But I haven't been perfected yet. You know? So I do experience those things. And here comes somebody in the back door. Or the front door. We've had this happen before. So we know what to do. We know the drill. So, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And as I told you, I am not made perfect. And so I do fear. But I know that the perfect love, I believe that this is referring to, is the love of God. Because God is the only one that's perfect. He's the only one that can give perfect love. And when I fear, I should go to Him. And I don't always. I'm not going to lie. I don't always. I don't often, maybe. Sometimes I just sit and endure it and hope that it passes. You know, and I worry about everything instead of saying... God, this is in your hands, you know, and there are times when I do say, you know what, it doesn't matter what happens today, it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow, it doesn't matter what happens to the next minute, God's in control, and when I can get to that place, which I get to that place sometimes, I feel the peace that, you know, Paul talks about in the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5. I feel that love, joy, and peace that I want to feel. But my mind does play games with me. And, and I don't know if it's my mind, it's my mind sometimes, if it's the devil, but whatever. I have these issues with fear. And I'm not going to, you know. And sometimes this verse makes me think of Rich because Rich says, Fear is a liar. I know he likes that song. And I know it's a liar. 
But I say, what if it's true? You know, and I just play these games with myself. But the power of love is that it can get rid of fear. It can make, you know, it can cast it out. It can get rid of that torment. And it can make us perfect. It can make us feel the peace that we want to feel. That's the power of love. And I mean, that's a feeling I think that everyone is after. Everyone's after that feeling. And they're searching for it in different ways. You know, and, and, and we all know the different ways. You know, sometimes, I mean, I've been there too. Drinking, drugs, whatever. You know, you look for this feeling of happiness or perfect love or that feeling of peace and you think you can find it elsewhere. But the, the Bible says the perfect love casteth out fear. And, and, and so the perfect love, I believe, only comes from God. It doesn't come from a bottle. It doesn't come from the dispensary. It doesn't come from those things. It comes from God, you know, and I think everything else is just a replacement. And, you know, it's one thing to say that. It's another thing to actually live that way. So, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm still on this journey and I'm still, I still need to learn this lesson myself. Um, another point that I wrote down is how important is love compared to other aspects of our Christian walk? Um, and we know that what Christian means. It means to be Christ-like, to follow Christ, Jesus, Christ the Anointed One. So how important is love compared to other aspects of our Christian walk? And that is in 1 Corinthians 13, if you want to turn there with me. And we're going to read the whole chapter. 1 Corinthians? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Lucky for you, the whole chapter is, I think, 13 verses. But it sounds big to say, yeah. you know, we're going to do the whole chapter. 14. Chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay. How important is love compared to other aspects of our Christian walk? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul is talking about spiritual gifts and, and that. And he starts kind of ranking them or saying compared to this or whatever, whatever. And love in this, cha in this chapter, in this it is, is called charity. That's the word charity. When you look up that word, it means love. So in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, how important is love compared to other aspects of our Christian walk? Well, check this out. Let's see what Paul says to the church at Corinth. Though I speak with the tongues of men and, the, and of angels and have not charity, have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkering symbol. A tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and all understanding. Can you imagine that? You can predict the future and you have all understanding. And though I have all faith. I mean, you have a lot of things right there. Prophecy. You have um, knowledge, all knowledge, and all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, to sacrifice everything, my money, my life, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up, doeth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, and is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believe all things, hope all, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Or a woman. For now we see through glass darkly, 
But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. So how important is love compared to other aspects of our Christian walk? I think Paul demonstrated that pretty plainly right there. And it's pretty self-explanatory. But without charity, without love, it really doesn't matter if you can predict the future. It doesn't matter if you know everything. It doesn't matter if you, who you, what you can do and who you are if you don't have love. And we talked about where that love comes from. The second point I wrote down was what does our ability to love say about us as a person? And we can bounce back to 1 John again in chapter 3, verse 14. <clears throat> Tina, you follow along? Follow along? Tina said she wasn't going to turn with me tonight. I talked to her about this already. But she still loves me, though. She says she does. 1 John 3, 14. What does our ability to love say about us as a person? So when you can demonstrate love, when you can actually you know, show the love of God to someone else, <clears throat> when you can be what God wants you to be, I suppose. 1 John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth, not his brother, abideth in death. 1 John 4, if you want to turn the page or flip over to 1 John 4, 7 and 8. What does our ability to love say about us as a person? Number one, that we've passed from death to life. In, verse, in chapter 4, verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So how important is love if God is love? It's pretty important. It's very important. That's why Janet wore that shirt tonight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> She's letting us know. She's letting us know. Love is coming. Um, the next point I wrote was, do we have an example of how we should... How we should love. And that's just in the same in the same chapter, first John 4. We'll just continue reading. We just finished in verse 8, so let's go to verse 9. Do we have an example of how we should love? In this way, in verse 9, in this was manifested, was rendered apparent, in this was rendered apparent or manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Verse 11, beloved, if God, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So do we have an example of how we should love? Yes. God gave himself for us through Jesus. Jesus gave his life for us. We are to give our lives for other people. You know, Jesus said that there's no greater love than, uh, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And so sometimes, even when you don't want to, even when you don't feel it, mentally you know that you should give your life sometimes or what, you know, give up what you desire for what, you know, your friends. Do that. Do that. And see, and see what happens. Um, we should love first. Our love should not be dependent on what others, on whether or not the other person loves us. God didn't come down, Jesus didn't come down based on whether or not we loved him. You know, some of you, oh, respect, it has to be earned. Love has to be earned. Well, if that's the case, you might be waiting a long time because maybe no one else is going to want to love. Maybe no one else is going to want to give respect. Jesus, if, we, if Jesus was waiting for us to love him first, he would have never came. Instead, he stepped out and came first. He made the first move. 
And I believe that if we're going to be Christian-like, we're going to follow Him, we sometimes have to make the first move. You don't wait on the other person. We don't wait on the other person. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard because sometimes you want to, I'll show them too. <laughs> you know, I get that mindset too. I'm, I'll show them. I'll show them and I'll, I'll cut them off and I won't talk to them. And I won't, I don't know. You know how it goes. The game goes. But there's a, there's a reason that we have love. God put that love in us. We have to sometimes be like him and make the first move. The next point I have is how do we know how to love another person? And if, and if I'm moving too fast, or you guys have anything you want to say, you've already done it, but just speak up. Um, how do we know, how do we know how to love another person? Matthew 19, verse 16. How do we know how to love another person? So when you're in that position where you want to love somebody, you feel like you should love somebody, you don't know what to do. Let's see what Matthew 19, Matthew 19, verse 16 through 19 we'll read. This is Jesus. Well, we'll see. There's a guy who's come to Jesus. You guys ready? Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into the life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And the last one, I think, helps describe how, how to love another person. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So you know how you like to be loved. And I'm not saying we all have to, you know, me, I like, I like cash. No, I'm just kidding. I like, you know, certain ways to be loved. I like to do certain things. or be, There's certain ways I like to be loved. But, you know, as a, as a person overall, you know how you like to be treated. We just treat other people the same way. Treat other people the way that we would want to be treated. Love other people the way that we would want to be loved. And that's what Jesus is telling this guy. I think he saved that one for last. Not, not as um, a coincidence that that one was last, that that commandment was last. Um, because, I mean, Jesus knew that you can't be justified by the law because he didn't try to keep the law himself. He knew that. So whenever some you know, people came to him and said, you know, um, uh, you know, how, how, how do, you know, what's the great commandment? He didn't go back and start listing all these commandments. He said, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and mind. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. He didn't try to teach, you know, the Ten Commandments to the, to, to the, to the lawyer who said that to him. Or the Pharisees who said that to him. He knew just, you know, and that's the same thing. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. And um, Paul taught the exact same thing. Galatians 3.11. And that is wrong. I know that's wrong. <laughs> but let's see. Galatians 3.11 says, but that no man is justified by the law. In the sight of God. Jesus knew that. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And, and Paul's quoting Habakkuk right there. The just shall live by faith. But that's not what I wanted to highlight. I wanted to highlight. Galatians 5. 13. 
No, Galatians 5.14. In terms of, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Here's Paul quoting Jesus, or Paul's quoting Leviticus, um, when he says in Galatians 5.14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So how do we know how to love one another, how to love another person? Love them as you, would, as you, as you love yourself. Yes, it is. Yes. Can I tell you that for four years I prayed and prayed for four years straight to love my neighbor as I love myself because I had a neighbor that every time I turned around he was doing something to me like I would cut my grass and blow everything off and have everything looking good, get in the shower and he cut his grass and blow it all over my stuff. You know, it's just that kind of a thing that he always did to me. And I prayed for four years that I could love my neighbor as I love myself. And God sold that park, and we got a new manager, and he had to move out because his wife was the manager. <laughs> so, greatest, so he's still working on you is what you're saying. They have the greatest family next door to me now. They got two little babies, and they're just the sweetest kids. Yeah, there are some people who are harder to love than others. Oh, yeah. Some people say I'm hard to love, Jackie. Oh, I, I know you guys I think something, but ask Candy. <laughs> yeah. Ask Candy. Sometimes I'm hard to love. <laughs> I've gotten better, but sometimes I'm hard to love too. I know it. I know it. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. So, Jackie, that leads to my next point then. Who is your neighbor? If we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves, who's our neighbor? Another neighbor I had that everybody didn't like either that was not a very nice person. He hit the lottery and bought a house and moved out. <laughs> mm. If you loved him, maybe if you loved him better, he would have gave you some of that money. Jackie, you learned a lesson here. I didn't want money. I didn't want money. I wanted peace. I'm just saying. I'm not saying you did it for the money, but maybe you would have got some of it. And then you could have shared it with us. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Come on. Learn your lesson, Jackie, and love, love your neighbor. Who's your neighbor now, Jackie? Actually, that house where he lived, has nobody, nobody has moved into it yet. There was, um, when Jesus told the lawyer, he said, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, who is my neighbor? Who did Jesus say? And love all my neighbors. Everybody. 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 I love all my neighbors. Yeah. Everybody's your neighbor, yeah. But he talked about the Good Samaritan which is a man from Samaria, but he gave a story, you know, it's the undesirables. Some of the people are, who are our neighbors that we need to love are the undesirables. And, that, you know, I'm undesirable sometimes. And there's been, lot, there's been many points in my life where I have been undesirable and other people have loved me despite that. And I, man, I do appreciate that a lot. And it's made a big difference in my, in my world, you know. And so if I can do that for somebody else, man, that'd be great. You know, that'd be great if, can you imagine somebody who's an undesirable, considered an undesirable, and you love them so much, they're like, what is this person thinking, caring about me? I'm always mean, I don't want people talking to me, I don't even like people, I don't want to blah, 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 and you still love that person, and eventually they say, you know what, that guy, or that girl, she must, the only way she can love me like that is God. God is trying to send me a message, and that person ends up in heaven. Because we love them, or because you love them. You know, wouldn't that be great? You know, this, um, that's that, uh, that, that song that says, Thank you for getting to the Lord. Well, in that song, you know, the somebody comes up to, you know, you gave money or whatever, and somebody comes up to you in heaven and says, Thank you so much. I would have, you know, I'm glad I didn't miss heaven, and it was because of you. You know, what, what kind of, impact would that have you know sometimes that can bring tears to your eyes yeah i had an experience i had i had had like five cancer operations and then they discovered that i had heart trouble and so i had to be operated on and i was just 
I just went into hysterics. I mean, my whole body was shaking. I thought, oh no, no more operations, you know. And uh, so anyway, I went in a room and, and I just, I did. I honestly prayed to God that he would take me. I just couldn't take any more operations. And honest. I, I would stand on a stack of bottles that he, somebody took me in their arms and I had the, the love, like you would never ever feel down here on earth. Mm. And I knew it had to be God. And so the doctor came in and I said, I'm going to be okay. And he said, well, I haven't even looked at you yet. I said, well, I already know. But my body just automatically, but it, it's no love like you could ever feel here right. on earth. So, you know. I think that's what taught me that you have to love everybody, you know, that uh, I really did want to go. I wanted God to take me, but he, he didn't. He didn't. He said, no. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't ready for me yet, so. <laughs> we need more trouble over here on yeah. the Ypsilanti Mission. <laughs> that's his shirt. You know, I, I, I never, ever experienced love like that. It yeah. was just awesome. So, you know, it is. I guess it's taught me how to love everybody, even if they don't love me. All know, right, amen. So, yeah. We love you. Bye -bye. God says if you do it unto your brother, you've done it unto me. There's a preacher down in Florida, one of the people in his congregation has no hands. Mm -hmm. And they were going to a men's meeting, and he said, you know, Pastor, you're going to have to feed me. And he said, I know. So they moved to the back of the, of the restaurant, and he fed him. And that night, his wife said to him, what did you do today? He said, I fed Jesus. And that's always stayed with me, because when you do it unto your brothers, you've done yeah. it unto, unto the Jesus. That's right. That's a good point, Pat. Very good point. Mm -hmm. I should have wrote, wrote that down. Wrote that down. <laughs> Anybody else? You know, I know we're supposed to be good people. But I work hard for what I got. And when I get to see somebody holding a sign, you know, homeless, needing money, and they're dressed better than I am. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I just can't give them money. Right. You know, I don't charity. And you hear so many times where people go, I follow them home, they live in a mansion in Ann Arbor, they yeah. drive to Silverado. Right. You know, a guy down in uh, 275 Michigan Avenue, met over McDonald's, got in a Cadillac. You know, it just, it, it, it's mm -hmm. hard. Yeah, you don't want people taking advantage of your love. Well, I just always think that maybe they're using it for drugs because I had a, a girl that lived behind me and she would stand up there at the corner of Rossonville, you know, and by the expressway and she overdosed one day. So, you know, you kind of hate to give yeah. money and think that they're going to, you know, use it for drugs. Or drugs I think that's where you can... You can, you know, pray, and sometimes right. you might feel led to, and, and this is how I look at it. If I feel like whatever reason that I should give money, and I, and I have, I mean, not to my own horn or anything, but like I, sometimes I felt like I don't have any other way. I, I feel like I need to give this person money. And I did what I felt like was right in my heart. And, and so whatever they do with it, you know, unfortunately, that's on them, but I followed what I felt like the Holy Spirit right. was telling me to do. And and I don't think that that's always, I don't think love is always that. You can certainly right. pray for that person, or there's right. a lot of different things. I, I think a lot of people, how we equate love sometimes is we just do and give and give and constantly do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes it might look like that. Sometimes in our families, I mean, it feels like sometimes I don't know what else I could possibly you know, give, but um, I don't think it's always that. I think that there's, you know, there's prayer for other people, whether it, they're doing wrong. I mean, you know, it could be more whatever you need to speak to that person's heart, you know, to pray that that, that happened. But I don't think it always equates to giving money when you don't feel like you, you know, should. I, I, don't, I don't think you have to always give money. I think you, mm -hmm. you know, um, buy them a meal and give them a meal. Or, you know, like if they need, if they're homeless and they're out on the street, you know, a blanket or mm -hmm. socks or, you know, something to keep them warm rather than money if you're afraid of how they're going to use it. And that's still showing love. Oh, sure, I won't tell you if you give money. 
Yeah. <laughs> I had a buddy one down yeah. pulled over this guy had a big old sign outside hungry, he needs something to eat. Yeah. He told him, get in, but what the rest of the eat? Yeah. No, 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 if you feel led to give, they take an advantage. Maybe later on they feel guilty for that, or God brings that to their remembrance and says, "You know that person cared enough to give that to you, and you right. just did that." You know, I mean, I, I've done the same thing. I'd say maybe not with God's money, mm -hmm. but with His love, with His um, forgiveness, with other things that He gives to me freely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm just saying we don't want to be, feel, like, feel like we're being taken advantage of, but. If I'm honest, sometimes I take advantage of God. Another thing it's hard to know, I mean, you don't know their life, you don't know, like there could be a veteran, you know, and there are some veterans that stand out. So, you know, if you're led to give money, give it to the right. Joe, I can't even speak. Go ahead, Joe, go. Go ahead. Me? Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. I had an incident when my two grandsons I raised for young boys, like 10 and 12. And we were going to Monroe. And there's always one spotted red light going right on the pit. And this gentleman sat out there all the time begging for money or food. And I would always just go up and around the corner. And Brandon said to me one day, Grandma, I think that man needs to eat. And I said, Grandma, don't give money to people like this. He said, well, where's your Christian part of your life? Mm -hmm. I said, well, maybe God will tell me someday. Mm -hmm. We pulled away from there, and this is not a semester. We pulled away. I took the kids to make mom's, and my grandson said, I want a box of stuff to take to that man that stood in my lunch. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, that taught me a lesson. Yeah. yeah. We did start taking food or taking them a box of something from wherever we were at. But it, it's kind of like you're torn. You don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But he had to remind me to do my Christian responsibility. <laughs> right. And Jojo, I like McDonald's too. Uh -huh. yeah. Donna? Well, since we're on the subject, of dog, <clears throat> So we don't know because children are so innocent. They really are. And I believe they're touched by God and love. Mm -hmm. So my mom passed away and her sister and my cousins came up. One was Nicholas, eight year old. And they live in Alabama and the Royal, you know, they're not used to cities. So my aunt lived in Detroit and they were going and little Nicholas, now mind you, right before they came up, the mom and Nicholas got saved. So they were in Detroit driving, and um, a gentleman had homeless, hungry, I don't remember, it was a while ago, sign. And little Nicholas said, hey, Jenny, you know, he's only 18 then. We've got to give him some money, and he's hungry. Mm -hmm. And he was so animate. And my aunt, who is a Christian and a mm -hmm. pastor's wife, and probably gave all these years, you know, mm -hmm. she said, no, 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 we can't do that, but you guys. That little boy, they were killed a week later, all of them in the car. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. On their way home. But that little Nicholas, at my mom's funeral, served everybody. He was godlike. And so we have to go back as a child. And maybe we can see that sign and yes, differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do pray and I do get. Not always, but I do. And I always think of little Nicholas. Mm -hmm. And your grandson. Out of the face. Yeah. Yeah. Candy, do you want to tell everybody how much you love me? <laughs> She's thinking about it, Joe. Now's a good time. We just had a message on love. No. Candy's um to be honest, she's one of the people who, when I am unlovable, and I have been not 
a good person seems she's loved me through it and has showed me you know that God is there for inside of her for sure you know, because I don't know how it'd be possible to love me you know but she's done it and I'm thankful how's that Jojo <laughs> anybody else Tom you want to close us in prayer Church, pray with Joe Kennedy, who would ask for guidance and direction each and every day, and we ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Here we go. You guys have a good day.